Well, Madam Speaker, we're here in the House tonight talking about probably one of the most critical issues that we're going to uh, be confronting in this Parliament. We're talking about a global food crisis and we need to talk about it more. We're talking about a global food crisis in which hundreds of millions of people's lives and well-being are at stake. We know already that 181 million people are expected uh, to be at crisis or worse levels of hunger around the world. This is a, this is a massive, massive challenge that we need to talk about more, the, the uh, global food crisis. And we need to be sounding the alarm on this and calling for stronger government action. How do we address this challenge? Well, I think we need to reflect on the need to focus more on food security and food aid as part of international development. We need to talk about the role that Russian aggression is playing in causing global hunger. And we need to talk about how Canadian government policy is hurting the agricultural sector and reducing their ability to respond to this global crisis. All three of these are parts of the response we need to have. When it comes to Canadian international development, I want to add my voice to those who are calling on the government to step up and do more to confront the global food crisis, to spend more specifically on issues of food security and emergency food support. I think too often this Liberal government wants to focus on using international assistance to play wedge politics and divide Canadians. And additionally, we've seen money spent through, through uh, foreign vehicles like the Chinese state-controlled Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, something that Conservatives oppose. Our international assistance should not be about wedge politics. It should not be about supporting authoritarian states, and it certainly should not be about currying political favour as part of some Security Council election. Our international development should be squarely focused on supporting the most vulnerable around the world, helping them meet vital needs like access to food. We need to do more, we should do more, and these vital needs for the most vulnerable, Madam Speaker, need to be our focus. Now, it's important for Canadians to understand that this escalating food crisis is one of the effects of the horrific invasion of Ukraine by the Putin regime. Ukrainian farmers play a critical role exporting food to the world, and the critical supply line for that food is export through the Black Sea. The total invasion of Ukraine by Russia from three sides included an amphibious assault through the Black Sea, and the Putin regime is now blockading the export of food from Ukraine. Russia is also mining agricultural land, destroying equipment, and otherwise making it very difficult for Russian farmers to do what they do best. Now, what is happening in Ukraine, and particularly in the Black Sea, is something very insidious. It is a return to the Stalin-era policy of using mass starvation as a political tool. Stalin sought to erase Ukrainian identity and use mass starvation as a tool of genocide during the Holodomor. And Vladimir Putin is also trying to erase Ukraine's existence and is again using mass starvation as part of the violence that this House has already said constitutes genocide. Now, some have speculated that the Putin regime's strategy is to provoke mass starvation in African countries that depend on exports from Ukraine and thus to put pressure on Europe by using mass starvation to generate escalating migration. This underlines the limitless depravity of the Putin regime, spreading the impact of its violence by causing mass starvation for political purposes. Madam Speaker, just like with the Holodomor, we are seeing the use of starvation by the Putin regime for political purposes. This already represents a widening of the conflict, in effect an attack on these other countries who depend on Ukrainian food by the Putin regime. So what do we do about this? Recognizing the profound risks and harms that go far beyond Ukraine's borders. We need to lean in hard by giving Ukraines all the tools that they need to fight this invasion to win and to end the Black Sea blockade. We must urgently supply vitally needed heavily, heavy artillery to Ukraine. We must spare no expense and hold nothing back in massively upping Ukraine's access to the artillery, to the heavy equipment that they need to win this war. This has been the clear and repeated ask of the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian people for more military equipment, the heavy artillery that they need, and we should support them in that. Now, we hear often, and rightly so, about how investments in international development can help global security. I agree. It is also true that investments in security, by supporting Ukraine, doing all we can to help Ukraine win the war, will save lives not just in Ukraine, but in the many other countries that rely on food from Ukraine. We need to see the use of starvation as a weapon of war, as a significant escalation, a broadening of the attack, requiring urgent action. During the Holodomor, the world failed to respond. We must not repeat this mistake. 
There's much more I could say about how we can support Canadian farmers, uh, but I hope that more people will, will lean in to respond to this crisis and call for stronger action from government. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Development. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague. Uh, I think we all agree in this House about the, uh, the, the illegal and egregious genocide that is happening uh, against the Ukrainian people. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask him, though, is um, one of Yevhenia Kravchuk, who was one of the MPs that was here this week, uh, said in her remarks that the Putin is relying on democracies, thinking that democracies are weak, because we are under pressure when our populations have inflation, increased food prices, increased fuel prices, and that he thinks that this is going to cause us to have pressure from our populations and therefore uh, not be as resolute. And I just wonder if my colleague uh, could comment a little bit about the fact that food prices and fuel prices and inflation that is happening across the world and here in Canada uh, is very much because of what, it, what Putin is doing in Ukraine and what his thoughts are on that. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park for Saskatchewan. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a pleasure to work with my uh, friend across the way. We, we agree on many issues. We disagree on, on some a, as well. I, I would say respectfully that I think uh, inflation is caused by a number of factors. And there, we had a significant issue of inflation uh, prior to the invasion of, uh, of, of Ukraine. And uh, a, a significant part of that is, is the government's approach to spending. We've, we've run up more debt in the last seven years uh, than the country had, uh, had, had previously. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll certainly agree uh, with her in saying that we need to have firm resolve. We need to be prepared uh, to do what is necessary uh, to impose uh, sanctions which are debilitating on the Russian economy. We need to up energy production uh, to, to displace Europe's dependent on energy. Uh, we need to supply the heavy artillery uh, that is required, and we need to endure through these, these circumstances because so much of what we believe in are at, is at stake. And I believe that, that citizens in democracies believe in and benefit from the systems and are prepared to endure. So, so while we might disagree on some aspects of the inflation issue, uh, I, I appreciate that we agree on the fundamental point about the strength of democracies. The member for Joliette. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank my colleague for his speech. I have a question. According to the FAO, the war and climate change are the main causes of food insecurity in the world. Last summer, for example, there were droughts in Western Canada and the United States and Russia, and the floods in Germany led to disastrous harvests, and we were hoping that this year would make it possible to bring stocks back up. But with the war in Ukraine, that hasn't been possible. What does my colleague think? Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Unfortunately, I, I only had five minutes. I mean, I can, I can speak for hours on almost any subject, but certainly on this subject, I, I could have had a lot, uh, a, a lot more to say. Uh, and the member raised some, some important points. I would say at the same time that some of the policies of this government that supposedly are about responding to climate change uh, are, are also having a negative effect on, on agriculture policies around uh, limiting the use of, of fertilizer that just make, make no sense and are making it harder for Canadian farmers to, uh, to supply uh, more food to to the world. Uh, so I, I think we need to recognize all of these different issues and, and, and recognize that we need to address the security issues, the international development issues, and also support Canadian agriculture a, a, as a key part of the response to this crisis. The Honourable Member for Windsor West. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, my colleague, for his intervention. I appreciate him also raising the Hall of Demore as a serious um, issue. And I um, wanted to ask him, though, about some of the Canadian companies that continue to do business in Russia. Uh, what should be done about their continued participation? And with regards to Putin, um, how long should sanctions remain in place uh, if we're able to see this resolved uh, at any point in time? I'd be interested to hear his perspective on that. The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park for Saskatchewan. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. In, in terms of companies that are continuing to do business with, with Russia, I guess that there are, there are two possible circumstances. One is we could speak about those that may be violating sanctions, and we could also speak about cases where the sanctions uh, are not preventing them from, from doing that. Uh, we, we continue to push for uh, tougher sanctions, and also we need strengthened sanctions enforcement. 
Um, I, I think uh, you know the, the, the member uh, has has talked about you know how we respond uh, to this food crisis. There are there are many different uh, actions that are that are required, and, and part of it is ensuring that victory, supporting our farmers, supporting international development. Uh, a lot of work that needs to be done, Madam Speaker, and I hope we'll be prepared to do that uh, work and have the result. Oh, I forgot the second part of his question. I'm sorry, was about uh, how long the sanctions should be in place. Very clearly, uh, we need to be committed to sustaining these sanctions until the Putin regime withdraws from all of Ukraine's sovereign territory, as was recognized by the government of Russia in the Budapest Memorandum. Thank you.